Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Anyway, this is the first episode to be shot with my new camera. And I'm sure that many of you are aware, the sound on my camera is absolute shite. So, yeah, I need to do something about that. As a matter of fact, I'm completely re-recording the voiceover, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a lapel microphone with one of these, and that will be connected up to a preamp, and that's going to be connected up to the computer. So, while the camera is recording the video, the computer will simultaneously be recording the audio from the microphone, and then I can put the two together in the video editor. And also, as some of you may or may not know, the microphone input on a computer isn't all that sensitive. It's more like somewhere between a microphone and a line level. So I've made a little preamp here. I made this a couple of years ago. And this not only amplifies the microphone, but it also has a limiter on it. So it'll keep things nice and level. Now I know some of you are going to ask for a schematic of this, and I'm not going to disappoint. So here is the schematic of the preamp. Yeah. I know. It looks complicated, but it's actually not. So, I'm going to break it down into the individual sections. So, here we have the microphone, and then this part here gives the microphone a little bit of a boost. And then this adjusts how much of that signal is going to get into the next stage. And what this does is it inhibits the signal. So basically, the more amount of current that gets into this transistor's base, the more it's going to inhibit the signal. Then we've got this transistor here, which does even more amplification. This amplifies about 80 times, according to my experiments. Don't know how much amplification this one does, I didn't measure that, but yeah. The output from this transistor goes out to our amplifier or tape recorder or computer, whatever. But some of that output goes into this 10k resistor here and into this transistor here which is just acting as a buffer then that gets rectified and um, boosted by these diodes and capacitors here and holds the peak for a few seconds and then that goes out and into the base of this transistor here and that's how it limits the signal now excuse the crudity of this drawing I didn't have time to draw it to scale or to paint it but this is a basic wiring diagram of how the thing's going to be connected so We've got the computer with its microphone input. As you can see, you've got a switch here so I can switch between line level input and what the computer calls microphone level input. Okay, well, I've been rummaging around in my parts bin and I found something that's going to eliminate my need for a switch, which is this jack socket here. It's got two sets of contacts. Now, normally with nothing plugged into this, these two contacts here will be connected together and these two contacts here will be connected together. But if I plug a 3.5mm jack plug into this, the contacts get separated so they're no longer making a connection to each other, and one set of those contacts connects to the jack plug itself. It's a little easier to see it from this angle. When I plug the jack plug in, you can see the two sets of contacts separating from each other, and that's basically how this works. Okay, so... I've got a cable soldered onto this now. And the other end is what's going to go into the computer, but right now, all I've got is just simply an extension cord. So I'm going to add the components so we can get line level. Okay, and here is the finished lead. So you can see we've got the jack plug connector here, and the capacitor and resistors that will reduce the signal to what computer calls microphone level. This plug here will connect up to a line level source, and this end will go into the computer. I've been experimenting around, found the ideal component values, so 5.1k resistor here, 10k resistor here, and 10 microfarad capacitor here, just to block the DC coming out from the computer. Right, I think it's about time we tested this thing. So, on this worktop here, you can call it a worktop of course, I have a dynamic microphone, which is connected to this dynamic microphone preamp that I made. I made that several years ago. And the output of the preamp is connected to the computer's microphone input through this little circuit that I just made. Also, on the worktop, 
I have a carbon granule microphone, which I'm going to plug into the jack, and we'll see if that switches out this microphone so we only hear from this one. So, right now, you're hearing from this microphone. Give it a little tap so you can tell that microphone's in use. I'm now going to plug in the carbon granule microphone. You might hear a bit of a loud pop, but we'll see if this works. So, I am now speaking into the carbon granule microphone to see how well this is working. I'm going to tap the other microphone to make sure that it's not picking anything up from that. Which it isn't, so that's good. Okay, so that seemed to work pretty well. Although the carbon granule microphone did seem to pick up a lot of subsonic frequencies when I was holding it. So, I had to filter that out, but all in all, it was a 100% success. So now it's time to move on to the electric microphone preamp. So what I want to do here is attach a few cables. This is where the microphone connects. Somewhere around here is where the line output is supposed to connect. And these wires here go to the power. So here it is everybody. Here is the preamp circuit. I made my own little microphone here which I'm going to clip onto my shirt. Let me just take the little fluffy bit off so you can see what's inside. You can see there's two electric condenser microphones in there. I selected the two that had the best sound quality. One of them sounded nice and full, but didn't have much treble. The other one was rather tinny, so it kind of complemented the other microphones, so I just connected them both in parallel, and well, that's the story behind that. But they do sound good, though. I've done some sound tests, and yeah, they actually sound pretty good. So I've also added the line output jack, and of course a connection for the battery, which is later going to get replaced by a power supply. Yeah, I know technically a battery is a power supply, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm going to clip this onto my shirt and we're going to hear how good it sounds. Let's see how well this works. Right, okay, there we go. So I'm now going to do a Cool Dude Clem style um, stuff. So, a blah 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 Translation, yes I'm going to get on and do a video about whatever this is when I've done this video. So, anyway. This is how the microphone sounds, the microphone that I made. So, anyway, I'll leave you with that, and until next time, goodbye.